morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folari. Um, today, let's continue where we left off uh, uh, yesterday, uh, by which I mean that we were looking at the Oransoye report, um, commissioned by President Jonathan, and um, it's been submitted, and shall we say it's been uh, uh, cooling its heels on the, sh the shelves uh, ever since then. Um, that is not to say that nothing was ever done about it anymore, but the important thing is that it didn't see the light of day until the president, President Tinobu, on Monday uh, in a Federal Executive Council meeting had said that now this, uh, that particular report is about to be implemented in full. Uh, we spoke about various aspects of it yesterday with uh, Prince Momo. Uh, today, our guest is Dr. Daniel Boala. Dr. Daniel Boala is a lawyer and a policy analyst. A fine morning to you. Thank you very much for making time for us. Thank you for having me, Mr. Yuri. Good morning to Nigeria. Indeed. Um, one of the things that have come up, uh, first of all, the Oransoye report, long story short, if, uh, if that is even possible, is that it's all about a leaner government that will be a lot more cost effective and save us scarce funds. That's maybe the long and short of it. Of course, efficiency must also be in there and all of that. But the question I want to ask you to start off with, Dr. Uh, Boala, is um, do you think that that report, the way it was made, is still uh, fit for purpose? Well, uh, thank you for having me, and good morning to Nigerians. Yes. One thing about governance, and generally, is that at every given time, you review steps, you review decisions, and then you modify them to suit the present uh, circumstance. So the fact that Mr. President approved the full implementation of the report does not in any way suggest that the president is saying, who like and think I just do it about it. But the spirit and the intent of that uh, report is what the president is talking about, its implementation. In other words, the, the president is also saying, in, in essence, that in implementing this Orosaye report, implement and suggest to me those ones that are realistic, those ones that are not, we will, and we will drop them. But I think there's a misconceived notion that people have, thinking that because he says he approved the full implementation of that report, then what it means is that even the non-essentials in the report must be brought to bear. First of all, the whole spirit and intent of that report of Orosa here was to bring about effectiveness and efficiency in civil service, which of course, uh, contrary to the general belief that political space is what floats the government, civil service is actually at the place where you have the government either working efficiently or that the government is even over bloated. So, for example, the Orosaye report of uh, that uh, President Bull of Jonathan Commission, the same attorney general in that administration said, no, there was no need for us to do the full implementation. And so they discarded the most part of it. When Buhari came on board, Buhari also caused a committee to be you know, set up to look at not just the Orosaye report and the white paper, but also to look at agencies and ministries that emerged after the Orosaye report. And then they did their own. They gave him their uh, conclusion on the matter. He attempted one or two things, and they dropped. Now, but President Mola Metinu is one that uh, everyone knows him as a courageous, courageous person. If he wants to do something, he doesn't look back. And uh, he's well aware of backlash. He's well aware of criticism. It's just like the case of the removal of first subsidy and the floating of the Naira. You will see that all the past government, they knew its importance, but they also knew the consequence of doing it. And that's why no one touched it. But when he came, he said, look, we cannot keep postponing our future. It's like the case of a family that is consistently living on credit, on borrowing, on credit, on borrowing. And at the end of the day, you will have to face yourself. You have to face the reality of the fact that are we actually making progress or should we live by our means? So in essence, the report is doable. Uh, however, the implementation of the report will call for a number of factors. Those ones that need streamlining, you streamline. Those, that, those ones that need legislative reform to bring them to conformity with reality. So for example, if you have two agencies, you want to you know, merge them into one, and both of these agencies have their enabling laws, then definitely you will have to repeal and replace those laws with one law that will then cover all of that. Like, for example, the EFCC. You have the EFCC Act, you have the ICPC Act. If you are going to bring them together with a code of conduct, then, of course, you have to repeal all of this act and then replace them with one act that will govern. 
if some of these uh, uh, agencies or departments are, are such that maybe uh, their functionality also enjoys the blessings of the constitution, then that means you are stretching beyond just uh, amending the act to look at constitutional amendment. But the 12 weeks that the president has given for the full implementation, it is not cast on so. If we get to the 12th week, and it is obvious that we've made a lot of progress, but we also need further time. This president is the type of person that is open to these kind of uh, um, uh, realities. So uh, people should take their minds off of the fact that because he says he ordered the full implementation, it means that even if a part of the recommendation in that report is no longer feasible, it means it must be brought to bear. No, that is not what the president is suggesting. The president is saying the spirit and the letter of that report, which is to bring about efficiency, effectiveness of the people's service, the time to do the reform is now. Salvo, Dr. Buella. Uh, let, let, let's now play a, a, a sort of a background report, a package, before we continue with this conversation. We cannot continue to lag behind. In 2012, the administration of President Goodluck Jonathan set up the Presidential Committee on the rationalization and restructuring of federal parasitals, commissions, and agencies. The committee was headed by a retired civil servant and former head of service of the Federation, Stephen Orosai. And then there were statements that were subject. The committee recommended the scrapping and merging of 220 out of the 541 statutory and non-statutory agencies. The 800-page reports of the committee noted that the functions of most government parasitals and agencies are overlapping. Of the original total contracts. As such, the committee in its report submitted in 2012 recommended the reduction of statutory government agencies from 263 to 161. In the global ICT age. As part of its recommendation, the committee suggested abolishment of 38 agencies, merger of 52, and reversion of 12 to departments in the ministries. Why there should be large differentials in salary. In 2014, the committee on the white paper of the Orasa report submitted its own report. 12 years after the recommendations were made, two review committees, the federal government is set to implement the recommendations. President Tinobu ordered the implementation of the Orosari report at the Federal Executive Council meeting on the Monday, 26th of February. According to the plan, numerous agencies will be scrapped, others combined or restructured to cut rising costs of governance. So it's a report that have been that have been in place for almost a decade, if not more than. And uh, the motive is to, I mean, was to streamline uh, government expenditure, most especially in the, in the area of uh, cost and uh, carrying out uh, the responsibilities of uh, government parasitals and agencies. Uh, going by what this government stands for, which is uh, prudence, accountability, and you know, uh, transparency in governance, it is important that the president, you know, assess and probably set up a committee to look into how they can see a way of implementing, if not all the report, at least a, a good part of the report, so that. Uh, you know, Nigeria can move forward from there. The government assured workers that that would not affect jobs. To demonstrate its resolve, the administration has considered a committee to implement the report within 12 weeks. The committee will be headed by the secretary to the government of the Federation, Judge Akume. The National Assembly is expected to play a crucial role in the implementation of the report as a legal framework or enabling act of some of the agencies need to be amended. I Dilius Waku, TVC News, Abuja. All right, then. So um, that's that uh, background report. And uh, as you were saying, Dr. Bwala, um, uh, really, th this, the president's uh, intendment, uh, to use one of those quaint words that they use in officialese, his, his intendment was that um, they, they, they would do um, the, the sensible thing. There will be adaptations because... 12 years ago is 12 years ago. And um, the figures have changed. For instance, we were seeing there that uh, 541 uh, MDAs were in consideration. It is said that there are many, many more than that now. Uh, the, yes, many, many, many more that, than that now. Uh, and, and so th there is the question of whether 12 weeks is going to be adequate for this 
uh, humongous uh, job that has to be done uh, so that this thing can take off very much, I think, in the way the president would have liked it to be. Because there's so much legislation involved. Uh, it has been mentioned before. Uh, many of those uh, uh, organs were creations of law. So what, in your considered opinion, um, would be a more, uh, shall we say, realistic time frame that the secretary of the government heading his committee uh, needs to do this work? As it is, it's 12 weeks. Do you think that's adequate? Well, yes. Uh, the, the answer is yes and no. Yes, if uh, the appointees of the president put their foot on ground. For example, all of those reforms that will require legislative uh, amendment, the office of the Attorney General ought to have the Secretary to the Government of the Federation can do that because they will not, they will not know the integrity and the implications of certain amendments. And the office of the Attorney General can come up in two weeks with a broad-based recommendation and even draft amendment most of these uh, laws when it comes to legislative reform. Okay. Secondly, when it, when you do deal with the National Assembly, for example, if you look at the last days of Buhari, the speed with which the Ninth Assembly was passing laws suggests that if the National Assembly is serious, all of this can be passed within 12 weeks. The will, if it is there. Because I remember in the last days of Buhari, close to 20-something amendments were done in less than three days. <laughs> it's way in the last days of President Jonathan, also, the National Assembly, within a space of two or three weeks, they did serious amendments. So that means the National Assembly can also determine the legislative process in terms of first reading, second reading, and then committee stage, public hearing, and then back to committee of group, and then passing it. So I'll give you an example of uh, institutions that, that, that may be difficult for you to uh, merge. If you look at the, the uh, Army University in Bill, and you look at the Nigerian Defense Academy, the intention is to match them. That will not work. The reason is simple. The Nigerian Defense Academy, it is like the Nigerian law school, where you train people to become barristers. The Army University is a university of commissioned servicemen. So uh, if you match them, that means you are turning the Army University to be like merely a faculty. And, and, and look at the investment and infrastructure there and the kind of training that have been given to people. And in fact, the call around the world for there to be a university for the armed forces so you can teach them civil engagement in, without prejudice to their, their military uh, 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 implications or military knowledge. So th this is the kind of realities at the end of the day, the president would have to leave the Army University where it is and then probably leave the Defense Academy to be. So recommendations will come, but it is my view that uh, the president's statement that 12 weeks is the timeline for the deliverables does not suggest that all of that will be done within 12 months, uh, within 12 weeks, but substantial part of it can be done within 12 weeks. The, those ones that are not possible within 12 weeks, certainly a recommendation will be made to the president. But again, I must sound this because it is often the case when a political leader makes a decision, those people who are appointed, if they want to undermine him, they have a way of delaying and undermining. The backlash at the end of the day is on the political leader and not on them. That is why, in my view, the president will need to watch carefully and be very determined about his decision for the reform. I am very sure that during Jonathan, it is the same pressure that the attorney general gave to him that he discarded the reform that he himself commissioned. It, during Buhari, it's the same. There were pressures from appointees. The reason you are appointed is to work. And if you cannot work with deadline and timeline, you are not fit and proper to function. And when you have concluded your work, even if it is not 100% completed, the man who appointed you can look at it on the face value and come to a conclusion that you've done your part because these other realities cannot be captured within the period of 12 weeks. But this appointee should not take it as an excuse or as an advantage to buy into the pressure of the society and the MDAs to be able to come back to the president at the end of the day and say, this is not realistic, and then you discourage the president from carrying out this reform. This reform that the president is doing is good for Nigeria. The reform in the energy sector that you saw, the removal of soil subsidies and the rest, were it not for courage, by now he would have been cowed in. The same thing with political leaders that came before him. So I am optimistic 
that a substantial part of this reform will be achieved within 12 weeks. However, those ones that are not possible, it will be clear to the president that efforts are made and they've reached, let's say, 70, 80, or 90 percent, but require an extension of time. A life, governance, politics, law, everything gives room for extension of time within which you can complete a life that is not completed. When you look at the Oransayi report coming up now uh, via the Federal Executive Council and uh, President Tinumbu, now they're saying, yep, it's approved, let's move forward. Um, this wasn't in the president's uh, campaign. Uh, it wasn't part of the original uh, strategy, even though the president was speaking about renewed hope. And clearly, uh, there are a lot of people who are saying that, yeah, you know, now that we come to it, this is the way. Um, I brought that up uh, because the president himself, observers have said, has not been exactly frugal in appointing um, his own cabinet and the presidency. People have observed that um, I think we have 48 ministers. Uh, yeah, we understand that there is the uh, point that um, some of these uh, ministers uh, are constitutional, constitutionally based. I understand that. But uh, there are those who have said that the president's retinue itself he must have known that what he was approving um, was going to come back. Uh, it will affect all of Nigeria. I don't think the president has anything against that, but it's actually going to affect him as well in terms of the appointment that he has made so far, uh, which is why I said we didn't know about this like we knew about fuel subsidy removal, uh, efforts to interfere with, um, uh, to intervene uh, in, in tink financial tinkering. So what are your thoughts there? What do, do you think that, where do you think this came from? Because it wasn't part of the strategy yeah. in terms of his uh, yeah, I, campaign. I, 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 I mean, so this, I mean, so this is the difference between, in my view, this president and other presidents. And that is not to uh, flatter him, but that's the truth. Uh, this president is a listening president. I tweeted two days ago that even if he is throwing on a particular path, if the public reaction regarding policy matters is one that he needs to adjust and adopt. This president is willing to do that. And that's a whole mark of leadership. And I told people, if you want to understand President Bola Mitinibu, just study the book on Abraham Lincoln, Executive Strategies for Tough Times. If you see that flexibility, adaptation, and the re-strategizing at every given time, you will know that this is what the president is about. Now, take, for example, this uh, cabinet thing. You see, the president is carrying out reforms stage by stage. By the time the president goes into reform in the security, it will shock Nigerians from the very foundation because he will reject in order to bring the security apparatus and architecture of the government to be consistent with modern times where we will deal with problems proactively and not reactively. When the president comes to the assessment of his cabinet, again, this will shake people to the very foundation. May God help a minister who thinks he's close to the president that you do not do your work. When the assessment time comes, you will know whether this is a president that has a strong will or is a president that can be told here and there. And leadership is about, like I said, flexibility. Even if the reform of or the, the ad uh, adoption and implementation of oral science report is not in the manifesto, of course, it, it, there's no way it should be in the manifesto because oral science report is merely a report. It is not like a government uh, policy. Now, this is why I think people should even credit it to President Bola Mertinibu because there are other leaders that will say, Kai, this report came through the other leader and I want to do my own differently. In fact, is that not the problem we're facing in Africa with succession? Once government comes, they discard the previous one and they don't want to continue, even if credit is due in that. But this president wants the right thing to be done. And when it comes to dealing with public perception, you also have to be sensitive as a leader because sometimes... If everything the public says is what you're going, at the end of the day, you will lead them through the wrong path. This same public space have been complaining about the need for the president to run a lean government to reject. Now he's touching the civil service. He's going to come to his cabinet. He's going to go to security. There will even be a political restructuring. Yeah. So uh, let us welcome this idea, in my view, with gladness. But we are also willing to adapt and flexible enough in implementing this policy, those ones that are not realistic, we can drop them. But the greater part of what has been recommended in that report, they are needed in our civil service. Because we don't have an efficient public service in Nigeria, if we are going to be honest with ourselves. 
Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. George, good morning, and thank you for holding on. Go ahead now. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning. Uh, good morning to Dr. Buella. Uncle Yori, uh, please recall that yes. last week, the president summoned the palm sex and uh, some heads of MDAs, and he told them that they were slowing down his government, his agenda. I, I, I hope you can recall that. The, the reason for that is this bureaucrat the bureaucratic procedures in the civil service that does not allow things to work, and it is deliberate. If you watch, I am, my business takes me to several civil service uh, centers. You will discover that an average director or even senior civil servant cannot operate a computer. How can in such a system slow down a dynamic governor or, or president? What I think the president should do is to digitalize the civil service. You, a, 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 a report does not mean that people will lose their jobs. I, I, I take that. But we need to weed out the dead wood and bring in people who can do better than them. We are talking about unemployment in our country. There are so many people that have graduated and are, uh, they have good skills, but they cannot find a space in the civil service because of corruption and this dead wood. Without those dead wood and bringing better skilled ones, without necessarily reducing the number of people that have been in employment. Otherwise, labor will say you are, you, you know, you, 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 they will kick you. So I think six weeks is enough, like uh, Dr. Bwala pointed out, if the National Assembly and the committee that has been appointed are serious to do their work, six weeks is enough to do it. The same pattern that Orosa Yeh report, I mean, Orosa Yeh adopted when he was writing the report, can be done, can still be used, is the same principle for any other agency that came on board after that report had been written. I want to say this today. Uncle Yori, Nigeria will not have a second able to reform this country. That's why we are told That's right. opportunity comes but once. That opportunity is now. Whether we resist reforms, whether we resist changes, whether we resist change of reforms, this is the time. If we miss it, I'm sorry, we may not get it again. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. George. Um, I, I, Dr. Bwala, I, I see that you are agreeing with that, and you referred to it earlier. Uh, even the uh, president's uh, you know, uh, assistant uh, at the time were, when, of the announcement was, uh, just about everybody has spoken about this bold, uh, the boldness of the decision. Uh, is that something that is uh, uh, important? And uh, what does it imply that there has been um, a propensity to kick the can down the road before now? Yeah, I, I agree with George. I, I like the fact he talked about Nigeria may not have another Tinubu when it comes to uh, reform. You see, every president comes with a distinctive characteristic. When Buhari came in 2015, the whole world rallied around Buhari because he said if corruption does not, if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill. Nigeria. He got global consensus on that. Unfortunately, Wadi failed to do that because he yielded to the pressure of appointees. This is what President Tinubu is trying to avoid. So President Tinubu cannot afford to yield to the pressure of inefficient, non-performing, and ineffective appointees. You see, because you say, look at the, 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 the word he said, which was uh, you know, captured by George, that I believe was strongly when he told civil servant. Don't slow down my agenda. Civil service is the issue. And they have their ways of putting pressure. They are connected to the people in the private sector. They are connected to people in government. They may even be connected to people in the villa to try to bring alternatives to the president to say this is not doable. To even say that's the reason why your previous, the previous president dropped the idea. But if the president could not listen to such advice and they went ahead and implemented the removal of subsidy, then I believe that the president is not going to yield to that. What the president will be open to are adaptations. 
Adaptation is like, okay, you're bringing the spirit and intent of the report. You're adapting it to 48. And, and to answer Mr. George, the digitization of the civil service is already underway. If you ask Boston to Daddy, he will tell you in the communication and digital uh, economy, they are going in the direction that you go to um, revive the civil service. And truly, even in the judicial sector, there are judges that cannot even try. So we, this reform is a call for duty. It's a call to duty. It is a national call for the betterment of Nigeria. Everybody will have to wake up. Wake up. We can't keep talking. The president, you need to uh, uh, reject the, uh, the, the civil service. Uh, you need to make the government lead, and then by the time the political leader wants to do it, it's, oh, oh, this is so, this is not achievable, this is not realistic. No. I encourage the president to stamp his feet, insist, if at the end of 12 weeks we see 70% success, good, that will be an extension of time. But the president should not be caught into believing that because, because I read somewhere, somebody said that the report is outdated. How is it outdated? How is it outdated? The merger of ministers, just because there were proliferation of agencies and departments after the report, does not mean it is outdated. What yeah. it means is that now the committee will have to look at both the RSI report, the realities that have happened after the report, bring them together, and then match them. Indeed. There are two, three, four agencies of government that could operate on that one, retain their jobs, the efficient one, but definitely if you are an ineffective and inefficient, non-qualifying civil servant, you have to think of alternative because the reform does not just go like that. There are people that will be caught up in the reform. That's the reality, the reality of life. All right, then. Um, Afolabi in Ilone, good morning. Thank you for holding on. Go ahead now. Yeah, good morning, Fola. Um, my point is just concerning the, the scrapping of the tag. One of the things, one of the things that about the did that gives a very good rest to pensioners is that the tag. If they scrap it and it goes back, we, we will not go back to the we will not go back to the dark days where pensioners are meant to suffer. You know, you will know the actual, actual number of people on pension, the issue of funding and everything of that nature. So, if that area has to be taken care of, you have to look at it critically. The dark has done a very good job the actual number of pensioners we have, and they answer them promptly. So, reporting to ministry, but taking back them back to the ministry, hmm, I fear, I fear. You remember the dark days, what pensioners used to suffer in those days? So, oh, all right, let then. them look at that area well. Okay. They can operate what to... Thank you very much, Mr. Afolabi, calling in from Ilori. Indeed, do appreciate your call. Um, let me answer. Let me, yes, okay. Uh, let me answer, I wanted let me to go off on a break, point. and I didn't yeah. want to. Uh, could you could you uh, could you relate to that as soon as we come back from the break, please? Uh, thank you very much. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Great, great. Okay, welcome back. And uh, 12 years after President Tinubu adopts the Aronsoye report for our uh, implementation, uh, that's our subject matter this morning. And our guest is Dr. Daniel Bwala. And uh, well, Dr. Bwala, you were going to relate to uh, the call of Afolabi that came in. But just before then, could I, you know, uh, could you do us the favor of holding on? Let us add uh, Izu, uh, Izu Agbe, who has also called in from. Uh, Abuja, or in, in that wire, so that we can combine the two. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Izuagwe. Yeah, good morning, uh, Yomi. Okay. Sorry. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, my name is Izuagwe Ibrahim, calling from Abuja. Okay. Um, we all know very well uh, President Ahmed Tunubu has been an apostle of uh, reform, national reforms, for a very long time. So one is not surprised, the both steps he has taken from day one, removing the foil subsidy, and now the Oransai report has gathered dust for over 12 years, 
And then recently, this morning, we heard the news as well, uh, some expatriate employment levy, which is going to help to generate employment in the country. One thing I want us to look at, in, the, in all of this, there are going to be some gains. The president should be very careful about how these gains to be managed. We have seen more funds allocated to the state. The state governors taking home more money. And we are not really seeing the impact of this money on the trodden, downtrodden masses. That is why you see the spirit of uh, protest here and there. We should not forget the fact that in this country today, there are human beings who are still drinking water from the same pond with wild animals, even within the FCC here. These are issues that must be addressed. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, I want to call on the president that these gains should be channeled to integrated rural development. That is where the greater masses of this country who are suffering lie. Until we are able to take care of the issue of those downtrodden in the rural areas, then we will continue to feel the heat in the urban area. You have the surge of population, you have the slums, then you have all those social vices that come with it. So these gains, my major point, is that they should be channeled to developing better life for people in the rural areas through integrated rural development. Thank oh. you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Izuagwe. Okay, back to you, Dr. Bwala. Uh, perhaps you wanted to pick up with uh, Afolabi's uh, uh, contribution to the program. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to allay his fears by telling him that if, uh, like an agency, like he mentioned, is taken back to the ministry, you will not see what we're used to seeing before. You see, because what we're used to seeing before was non-performing, ineffective, and inefficient ministers and ministry heads. But this time around, the reform is like a tornado. When it comes, you're ready, you stay consistent. You are not ready, it takes you off. So when it is the part of the reform of the president that by the time they are taken back to the ministries, they are going to be under the leadership of a 14-age minister. That's why he started with this. He's going to come to ministerial reform too, where he will now do what he needs to do in order to make sure that we have a 14-age uh, a civil service system. So you shouldn't have fears. This reform will bring about effective people. And there will be a sort of um, accountability means, like, for example, during Obasanjo, that was when they introduced the SAVICOM, where everybody's uh, opinion is heard directly without the interference of ministers or ministry heads, even when it comes to bribery, corruption, and some of these things. So the president is looking at all of those reforms, and the people he has appointed will make the recommendation in that regard. With respect to the last speaker talking about, uh, and I agree with him, that uh, money has been challenged to the governors. We don't see the result in the state. I think last week or two weeks ago, I have been hurt on that. And I even called upon the president to direct the central bank and the minister of finance to publish monthly allocation of states. Let the Nigerian people know how much their state governors are earning. Because this thing happened, if it was not in Obas and just time, it must be in Jonathan's time. When they were putting the pressure on the federal government and then, you know, hiding themselves, immune themselves from the realities of, of you know, what they were supposed to do as governors. As soon as Mkonje Wilder started publishing in the national dailies their monthly allocation, governors now began to sit up. Because now you can't lie to the civil servant, you can't lie to the judiciary, you can't lie to the local government. You cannot, some governors even t tell their people that they have not received allocation. When we have seen not just the increase because of removal of post subsidy, but that recently, allegedly, year and year long confirmed, additional funds were given to them. Then I need to also call on civil society and some of the non-governmental organizations. They also need to grow because for now, their psychic is also built to think that we are running a unitary government where everything is the president. But God said, like what the last speaker talked about, rural efficiency, you know, where you bring governors to the rural area. The rural areas are not federal government. They are local government. And then you have state government. And this allocation is shared between federal government, state government, and local government. I can beat my chest to tell you, in the whole of Nigeria, you will rarely find a state government that actually spends up to 20% of what they get for the local government in the local government, not to talk of the state. And the federal system is built in a way that the president cannot start fighting them. Like the way Obasanjo was impeaching governors here and there. 
but it is left for the Nigerian populace to now put the pressure on their governors. Yeah. His own is showing leadership. He increased the allocation. And the last meeting he has had with them, that was part of the issues he told them. I have increased your allocation. Why are crises in your state? Can't you deal with the hardship in your state? So these are the things that the Nigerian people, should, even the press, we really talk about state government. Yeah. We only talk about the president and the federal government. I think it's about time we begin to call out states. This is how much so 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 state. How is it that the people there can't drink water? How is it that school fees are not paid? How is it that civil servants are not paid? How is it that the judiciary is yeah. not paid? Yeah. They receive over three hundred percent, Mr. Yuri, over three hundred percent of their monthly allocation since the removal of subsidy goes to the state. We have not seen the impact. Lagos State is quite impressive, and I think one or two other states that came out with clearly defined plan on how to touch the various citizens, indigents, and residents of the state, market people, students, those people who are vulnerable, how they will get food to eat. Apart from that, how many governors have had press meetings and told the Nigerian people what they intend to do after receiving this much? Indeed. Thank you very much, Dr. Bola. In fact, uh, on that particular point about the governors being up and doing and reporting uh, perhaps more fully on uh, what, what their thoughts are. Um, uh, a lot Thank of Nigerians you. have said that the governors themselves are listening. If not them, then their aides. Um, Mazi Okoroafo in Arochuku. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Sayori. Good morning, our guest. Sayori, you see, what our guests will just write this again and you can just to join together what you said. We should also be asking the governors. All these uh, security votes they collect, what are they doing for the people? I, I agree that they should take care of themselves. But what is happening? Because do you know that this security vote that the governors also are collecting, if they use at least 5% or 10% of it and take care of the local government in the audit to society, that there will be no uh, problem of insecurity in, in Nigeria. Do you know that? But so like, what are they accumulating that uh, security vote for them? What are they doing for them? Because you ask yourself, even the votes that are collected, all the East, East local government have their own natural resources. Are they harnessing it? So, if, if, if they are the report, if the, the federal government has done a very nice thing, this is a lesson to us that any time a university or a report or a report is being gathered, the government should do make use of that report, not to go and dump it that we don't this a, a confirm report. Because if the confirm then this issue of restructuring, restructuring will not happen. If everything could have balanced by now, so even the parliamentary system, the people are talking, blah, blah. now, when we talk about all this of government, government, government. The state governors, the local government. That is why I'm saying that if the autonomy has been given to the local government authority to, uh, to be on their own, all these issues, federalists have been that the audits will be viable. We're not to talk about the own But even if everything abandoned, no autonomy of local government. Governors can conduct their own Kangaroo kind of election to carry anybody that in place. If they don't want to discuss everything, and just say that interim government, interim government, it's perversely cancelled. That is the problem. If we do the need for my brothers and sisters. They will not feel like unemployment. But we don't want to do the needs. We don't want to do everything is a divide and rule. That is the issue. My own tribe, my own tribe in the local government, my own tribe in the city. No. The way forward, Nigeria have to sit up. Our governors have to sit up and do the needs for. Forget about whether opposition they do. There's nobody in this country, in the whole world. If there any place, even the religious leader, even general oversee of anything. If people don't criticize you without anything, maybe you are not doing the need for. When you are doing the need for, you must be criticized. What you do? You listen to all those critics and do what? Do the need for. And, and that is why when you want to criticize, criticize with facts and figures so that the person you are criticizing will know the need for and do the need for. But the thing is this the way we are moving, what else that people have done? But the question is what is the outcome of this protest? What is the result of the protest? Have you achieved what you protested for? That is the question. That is why we, uh, our, uh, our brother was just talking about water, water. Now, this is right in the freeway. Do you know that many places they cannot talk about borehole, they cannot talk about water. You ask us, where is the honorable members? They go to Abuja, settle down there, their constituency is dying, nobody talking about to prepare. Five bottles water, what does it take? Okay. They this a uh, what does it take? Borehole doesn't cost. Uh -huh. But they make clear benefit. I don't know when Nigeria crack, they remove the ladder. I live with the Abba. Abba brother, Abba sister. Think about vanity or for vanity or vanity. Good morning, Sayuri. Good morning, Nigeria. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi Okora. For, and if you happen to just be joining us, uh, we're looking at the subject matter 12 years after President Tinubu adopts the Aransayu report. 
And um, as you know, these conversations will roll. And uh, a viewer called in from a lorry and spoke about wanting to see uh, much better uh, integrated rural development. And that has led us to the particular avenue that we're pursuing now. Dr. Boala has pointed out that do not forget that rural <laughs> development, integrated rural development, it's a function of the states. So uh, the governors, in, in fact, this, this whole subject matter here about adopting the Aronsari report and a leaner form of government, it's not only in one place. All Nigerians are going to have to be on board on it. And um, there are not exactly fears, but apprehensions that uh, Nigerians tend to politicize anything. And there are those who will probably bring a political aspect to this because they, 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 they're suddenly thinking about themselves and they're thinking about what they might lose out of the uh, intention of the Aronsaye report that the president has said, go and adopt fully. And which uh, our guest, Dr. Bwala, has said that uh, indeed that is going to be done with uh, a fair bit of uh, um, adaptation, seeing as the, the lie of the ground is different 12 years later uh, than when Oransaye was uh, putting the report together. So, um, uh, Dr. Bwala, uh, th that point about the politicization, yeah. uh, we, we have to be wary of, of that, perhaps, and have to be eagle-eyed to root out any such distractions, right? Yeah, you're right. And in fact, that's the reason why if you look at the general populace, they are beginning to be discouraged by certain um, pressure groups, like, for example, the Nigerian Labour Congress. The reason why the protest was a disaster was because their protest was misplaced priority. How can the president be held responsible, squarely responsible for hunger, let's say, in KB state, when we are running a federal government, meaning there is a federal government, there is a state government? If you look at our own constitution, you will see how at the powers that are within the precinct of the federal government in section 251, and you see the powers and other sections of the constitution, and you see that of the state. When it comes to this to rural thing, rural development, when it comes to food security, when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to something, they fall within the powers of the federating unit. So the line, and, and look at it this way, Mr. Yobe. The federal civil servant constitute less than 30% of the overall civil service in Nigeria. Greater number of civil servants are in the states. So if you bring the 36 states cumulatively, count the number of civil servants as against federal civil servants, you will know that the NLC is just wasting time. Why won't the, the NLC conduct the protest in every state, let the protest be directed at the state governor first, to account for that much is receiving and without consequential effect on the federal workers and then they can trickle it down to other aspects of the economy of that state and Indeed. infrastructure and the rest. But, the, but now, even if a bird flies on top of your house, President Tinubu is responsible. And our <laughs> psychic has been built to believe that. So governors conveniently, conveniently hide away from their responsibility. For God's sake, if you receive over 300%, there is no reason why you will not deal with hunger primarily. Then go beyond dealing with hunger to talk about how to create jobs then go beyond how to create jobs to talk about enhancing prosperity of that state so you can be a viable and competing state in the country. So I think, and I like what Yuri is doing. You know, you talked about one coverage that you're doing, looking at the states and the rest. I can imagine if the Nigerian media for one second decide to really focus on this state and keep the conversation for two, three months, believe me, there will be effectiveness. You will see improvement in dealing with apps in Nigeria because we will then point at the problem where it is. If you look at the powers of the president, armed forces, currency, security, look at the constitution. But now the president is held accountable for local government affairs, held accountable for state affairs, held accountable for private sector affairs. Yeah. 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 Federal government is to create an enabling environment for people to thrive. Mm -hmm. Government is at the state level. That's where government is. Okay. Local and state is the actual government. Federal government job is to create the environment and then intervene where necessary. Indeed. Uh, Mr. Bubakar in Kaduna, thank you very much for holding on. Good morning. Uh, go ahead now. Uncle Yori, good morning. How everything? Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Uncle Yori, thank you for bringing this matter, Orosanya report. And uh, we, are we Nigerians, I know there are difficulties in the country, but thanks to Tunumbu for having the courage to hold the bull 
by the horn because it's not able politician that will be able to implement all these top 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 decisions because all of them will be thinking of their second tenure but he he is trying to repair nigeria to fix nigeria the way it's supposed to be so that we can be living according to our arms according to ourselves because we have been living a fake life these Orasanya reports, they overbloated a civil service or overbloated civil servant in the civil service is terribly too much. It's taken, in fact, almost 50 percent of the money Nigeria is generating in April months. All this commission, 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 commission. I'm telling you, some of them are duplication of duties. All these research institutes, research this, research that, research council this, research council that, research, I'm telling you, it's a duplication of duty. And this, our National Assembly, are not even helping the matters. Also, for saying, now we have, look at, we have Ministry of Niger Delta. We have NMDC. Uh, NMDC. Niger Delta Development, NDDC, Niger Delta Development Company. And look at the way they said, uh, uh, not is uh, development council or whatever. You see, very soon now, if you allow this uh, National Assembly, every region will have a development authority. Why do we have a governors? They have three or four times of what they are getting before, before the removal of subsidy. We are not seeing anything on ground. Now, you go and create another ministry that will help those governors. The only thing is to buy convoy motors. Um, Again, why civil, this uh, Nigerian civil defense are not mad? with police because we don't have much police and the money recovered in the uh, this removal of subsidy it will be better to be employing a uh, police and the military every year not only cons or deport but a real military those that have good training let's say from Woodhill where you have uh, inspectors uh, uh, course, where, like NDA, where you have second lieutenant, not where they will recruit somebody for only nine years who doesn't even know how to hold guns. You just put them to kidnappers. Kidnappers will clear hundreds of them in a day. All right, then. See, well, I, I, I want to thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Bubakar, for calling in from uh, Kiduna. Uh, we, we're fast running out of time, but I just you know, hand it over to Dr. Daniel Abuala uh, for commentary and uh, maybe some sort of a response in, closing, in your closing remarks. Yeah. So you can, you can see, Mr. Yuri, this, your program is rich enough to take the feedback from the Nigerian people. And not a single one is against the implementation of the oversight for one. Not a single one is against the reform agenda of Mr. President. These are the Nigerian people. But when you see those ones who are politicizing in the media space, where they will never see anything good in what the president is doing because they don't like him or because he's not from their party. And that's why I said we have to go beyond that to look at realities. Criticism from opposition is welcome. President Tinibu has adjusted and you know in a program based on criticism from the opposition. That's government, that's flexibility. I call on Nigerians, let us come together. This reform, there is nowhere in the world where reform is convenient. Nowhere. And, and, and be patient if you feel like there is an aspect of government, you have not seen the president doing a reform there. Everything has time and it's going stage by stage. But this Orosai report, I will urge the president to be firm on that and make sure that this is delivered. Well, Those ones that are not realistic after the 12 weeks that need to be extended, they should. But I want to appeal to the president, Army University, to be allowed to stay distinct from the Nigerian Defense Academy because merging them will defeat the entire purpose of professionalism as a vocation and a different from a vocational training. All right, then. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Daniel Mwala.
uh, lawyer and uh, policy analyst. Uh, it's been quite an exciting time uh, since the beginning of the program. Thank you very much once Thank again you. for the benefit of your views. We're going to have to leave it Thank there, indeed. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.